on, Claudia, you're next. So hello everyone, I'm Claudia and I am an organizational agility consultant at PA Consulting. Essentially, I help financial services firms redesign the operating model for agility. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to you about uh, my two main passions, agility and diversity and inclusion. So let's start. So here's a scenario. There is Agimad Corporation and they want to solve problems quicker with agility. And we are all flies on the wall during the most senior executive meeting. So let's look at the agenda. What's wrong with it? Well, actually, it's great because they're talking about agile agility at the most senior executive level. But as the meeting goes on, you can indeed tell that they are stuck in a transformation loop. Why? Well, NPS scores are going up, but customers are still unsatisfied. And yes, agile teams are using Scrum, but there's no actual continuous improvement implemented. And yes, training has been delivered, but culture is not improving. So why? Well, let's take a step back. So we all know that we live in a very complex world, but actually what we don't know is that we don't really know what's yet to come. And that creates all another level of complexity. It is simply unsurprising that organizations have turned to agile and agility to solve this complexity. I mean, we all know agile solves complexity by promoting empiricism, collaboration, continuous learning. However, even with agility, there's some challenges that organization cannot tackle. But why? What is the missing ingredient? Well, resolving complexity needs different minds. Ingenuity needs different perspectives. So to enable agility and solve the real challenges, I think that we need diversity and inclusion. So organizations should stop seeing diversity as a KPI and take the leap and see it as an asset. This means seeing diversity as the true catalyst for business agility and complex problem solving. So, we all know that an agile organization is likely to have these three characteristics. They are customer focused, they are adaptive, and they empower employees. And I believe that none of these three aspects can be achieved without diversity and inclusion. But how can this really help? So let's look at it together. First, we know that every organization is facing the challenge, how do we stay relevant? And here comes agile. But the agile drive to quickly market the product is sometimes not enough to address customer diversity. Instead, it can lead to rush releases that are basically ignorant of a diverse market base. And you will know that accessibility requirements don't usually make the cut for MVP. So how can diversity really help? Well, first of all, it helps with communicating with customers and creating bonds. So for example, do not try to organize a focus group if your development team is made up of all men and they're asking a group of women, customers women, for feedback on a period tracking app. That is not going to work. A truly diverse team is able to understand each type of customer. In fact, second, diversity really helps with understanding and empathizing with the unique perspectives. And third, diversity really helps with reduction in group thinking. So a group lacking diversity and interpreting a set of quantitative data, so numbers, will definitely miss opportunities for diverse products. Why? Because they will only take into account what the majority wants. Second, diversity is paramount for practicing Scrum properly. No company can be said to be practicing Scrum without these three elements on the screen, and we all know that. However, most companies still struggle to inspect and adapt the current systems of power. This is because I think a long-standing inertia, which is fueled by the lack of diverse thinking. So diversity can help with transparency. If you focus on making something fair, then transparency will come. If something is fair, no one hides it. Inspection. Well, diversity promotes cultural curiosity. It means it, it, means it allows different people asking different questions which challenge the status quo. And third, adaptation. 
Well, if you're used to deal with different people and different ideas, then you would be more likely to accept new ways of working and organizational changes that come with business agility, digital transformation, and just complex problem solving. And last, empowerment. Empowerment is crucial to agility, but empowerment comes from trust. And unfortunately, trust is not always the best friend of diversity. Most studies, in fact, say that we trust people that look like us. So if a company doesn't link their agile empowering efforts with diversity, well, only the employees who look like the boss will be empowered. So how does diversity really help? Yes, companies should focus on empowering, but also on removing unconscious bias. Create an environment with no microaggressions. Treat everyone the same and empower everyone the same. And second, focus on empowering, but also focus on psychological safety. We need to remove the diverse syndrome, which is the fear that making different decisions or introducing new ideas or even making different mistakes will be punished. What should executives do? Well, I propose a new agenda. Yes, look at the MPS scores, but actually start tracking the number of focus groups organized with diverse customer teams. And do look at the accessibility scores. Yes, it is important to make sure that your teams are using Scrum, but start tracking the number of continuous improvement activities actually implemented and ask employees for feedback on transparency. And last but not least, it is important to deliver training, but let's make sure that we know whether there is a natural corresponding reduction in microaggressions. And most importantly, let's see if there is a positive impact on psychological safety scores. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it.